Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live, and this evening we have uh, a special guest here, Brother and Pastor Paul Begley from uh, Indiana. And uh, Brother Paul, we go right into the, the different issues that we're looking at tonight, and that is global conflicts and the wars. Uh, and, and no doubt we may get into the stock market a little bit as well, a little bit later here in the program, but we, we wanted to take the time and cover with you guys the different wars and the, the heated up fronts, you might call it. So anyway, Pastor Paul, God bless you, my brother, and thank you for being here with us here on Israeli News Live. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Rabbi Stenu. And I can tell you that the best thing about all of our fellowship with one another is that as the world's falling apart it's good to know that we've got christ in our life and that we're you know working together uh because he's coming soon and this world is falling apart it really looks that way amen amen it definitely is pastor paul and uh, of course, I know that we'll be meeting together in October in Israel, uh, some work you're planning on doing over there as well. And yet Israel uh, is, uh, is a hotbed right now uh, of, of issues going on over there. Um, the IDF, one of the news articles that I, that I was looking at earlier today, Pastor Paul, is uh, from uh, the Chadashot, uh, which is uh, uh, YNET News. And, and the title of the article here was IDF troops prepared for possible incursion into Syria. Uh, as you are well aware of, we've already had, we had some uh, uh, bombs that were lobbed in from Syria into uh, northern Israel and the Golan there. Uh, Sister Shoshana, a very dear friend of ours that lives up there uh, in the Golan, uh, we found out she was doing safely, but, uh, but you know, she gets to see these things because when they go flying up there, it's, it's close to home. You know what, it's amazing, the same day that happened too, and we'll, well, I know we'll talk about uh, Korea in a little bit, but the same, uh, Korea was shooting four uh, rockets in the South Korea, four rockets come flying over the, the border there from the Golan into uh, Israel, and Israel of course responded very swiftly and very powerfully, which they have to, and from what I understand, uh, Brother Stephen, is that it was the, uh, Jihad, it was the, what they call themselves, the Islamic Jihad. And yet, aren't they just basically another proxy for Iran? They are. Uh, in fact, as far as a proxy, the Iranians are, are orchestrating all the different uh, factions that are in uh, Syria, and uh, as well as Hezbollah. They're, uh, they're, they're backed by the Iranians as well. And, uh, and all these little factions that are going on over there, other than, other than where... Uh, we see that ISIS, ISIS is not so much backed by the Iranians as much as uh, ISIS was originally, and this is kind of interesting, was originally started by the United States. And recently on a news broadcast, uh, I was, oh gosh, I, oh, it was actually on a Slovakia news broadcast, uh, I'm sorry, Czech Republic broadcast, we were watching on the, the local news here, they were speaking to uh, a, a man in, in uh, uh, by Libya when they're talking about the fighting that's going on over there and this man that was on the broadcast I don't recall his name but he actually stated that the United States back in uh, 20 uh, two, excuse me, 2003 I believe he states or he said either there 2011 he stated that the US was arming all of these factions uh, that later become known as ISIS and he said they knew that they were going to become a, a, a group that would be a major problem in the Middle East and of course it spiraled out of control so it's either it's either the forces that the US is backing or it ends up being the forces that Iran is backing and inadvertently it's Russia backing Iran so that's you know, you know, I take sides for Russia a little bit when it comes to the Ukrainian crisis, but I cannot take sides with them when it comes to this issue with Iran because they are arming the very people that are they know is going to attack Israel. Right, and that, that, that and unfortunately that shows the real the real intentions of Russia at the end of the day. I'm with you with the Iranian thing. I mean, uh, I mean, excuse me, with the uh, Ukrainian situation that uh, you know the West has poked uh, Putin enough. I think they've kicked him enough. They've, they've, they've uh, antagonized him. And I'll, I'll say basically the Obama administration has. We didn't have this problem uh, before the Obama administration. He has really divided the relationship 
with Putin and Russia. It's, it's been ugly. But at the same time, as you said, uh, ultimately Russia definitely has locked arms with the Iranians, and the Iranians are the number one sponsor for terrorism. I mean, not only do they sponsor this Islamic Jihad crowd, but they, uh, you know, Assad, Syria's President Assad, Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, uh, the Houthis in Yemen. I mean, they're, they're literally creating chaos everywhere. And all of those groups are outright enemies of Israel. There's no question about it. And I want to say this real quick. And this Iranian nuke deal, we went from Israel being a part, a mainstream part and great ally, and Iran isolated. Now, with the six superpowers joining with Iran, it's Israel isolated and the rest of the world over here because who's gonna go against the six superpowers? So this has been an unbelievable shift and it's, it's outright wrong and everyone knows it and now we're starting to hear more and more and more, Brother Stephen, of some of the uh, secret details of this deal. It's getting worse every day of what all is in this agreement. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor Paul, you mentioned one thing here that I want to ask you about um, and to see if you're aware of this or not. And this came to me from Sister Shoshana. Uh, she'd sent me an email. I just saw this email today. I get so many emails. I'm like backed up right now with over 300. I haven't answered as of yet. But uh, she, she, I wrote it down on my notes here. She told me, she said, Brother, what is actually happening? She said, everyone is coming against Israel. And of course, now she lives in Israel. Uh, she did Aliyah. She lives there. And she said to me, she says, my brother, she says, American Airlines has canceled their flights uh, to Israel uh, for the upcoming September month. Are you aware of this, Pastor Paul? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. The, well, they're supposed to, um, American Airlines announced that they're going to stop all flights to Israel forever. The last flight will be January 4th out of Philadelphia to Israel, and that's the last flight they'll ever do. And they're saying it's because of financial reasons. Now, I'm not aware of them shutting down flights up in the month of September, but they may, they may very well do that as well. But they have made an announcement, and this is huge because when, when, when the American airlines decide they're no longer going to do business with Israel, and that, then that just squeezes how many really will be left. I know Delta will still be doing it. And of course, uh, Air, Air Al, of course, and I've flown Air Al uh, two out of the three times I've come to Israel. Uh, so this is huge. To me, this is, again, part of that isolation. It's part of the, and they're going to do it militarily, but they're going to do it economically, and they're going to do it uh, politically at the United Nations. I'm afraid it's going to be an ugly, session in uh, coming up here in September. Amen, Pastor Paul. You know, and speaking of uh, the United Nations there, I don't know if you're aware of this either, but uh, Vladimir Putin has been said that he is actually going to be speaking at the United Nations uh, this year. And, and I, I did a segment not long ago, uh, Pastor Paul, and I <laughs> it's kind of funny. I call it uh, Vatican finds a uh, new warlord, and and I suggested that maybe Vladimir Putin may be their warlord. Now I, I said it more in a jokingly way, but I was serious as well because what you're seeing is the commonality there as well as far as the communism. Because you know the Pope is calling, uh, which I don't really want to go off on that tangent right now, but he is calling for a redistribution of wealth. And I did mention, when I look at the economy and the situation that's happening in the stock market here recently, I made the comment to my wife. I said, you know, could it be that one of the ways that they could redistribute the wealth is collapse the economic world system and have a new world banking system? Well, then they got everybody's money at that point there. They say your money is valueless and give you maybe 10% on the dollar there and then turn around and redistribute the wealth in that way. Yeah, the, this is really, really bad because at the United Nations, you're right, Putin is going to speak. The day he speaks, I saw this yesterday, he's going to speak the same day that President Barack Obama speaks and that Iranian President Hassan Rouhani speaks. And uh, there's one other one, okay? Now, I don't even know if Benjamin Netanyahu is scheduled this year. I'm hoping he is. Uh, he needs to be to stand up for Israel, and let's hope he is. 
The Pope will also speak, but it's on a different day. No, it might be the same day. I'm not sure. It might be the same day, which is the 25th of September. He is speaking. And I did see that the Pope's agenda, you are exactly right, redistribution of wealth, and he wants the world to come under international law. I mean, this is new world order if there ever was. I mean, I don't, what else do you want me to do with this? Um, international law. So he wants, he wants the UN international law to supersede all individual national laws. And that's, that's a one world governance. That would be called a one world governance. And that would be a one world, uh, you know, a new world order, really. That's, that's exactly right, Pastor Paul. And uh, I just quickly pulled up to see if, if I could quickly see the date that he speaks there at the UN. I, I didn't find it quick enough. You might find that, Pastor Paul, as well. But, you know, the funny thing is, is even Alex Jones, and, and I don't listen to Alex Jones hardly at all, but I, I have picked up some of his broadcasts, especially here recently, because he's recognized, of all people, he has actually recognized and has called out uh, that the Pope of Rome is definitely pushing for a new world order. Um, you know, and, and I had some people, you know, recently say to me, they said, well, you know, Steve, you're, you kind of have a similar message. Of course, I don't believe in redistribution of wealth, but they said, you know, you're, you're for more for animal rights, and so is he. And I said, well, hey, I said, you know, I know a lot of people believe he's a false prophet. I said, but, you know, nonetheless, I said, even if you take the Antichrist, for example, I say, you know, if he's the Antichrist, I said, anti is a substitute or a like Christ. I said, so therefore, I said, he's got to be for that as well. And he's going to have some qualities that are right, you know, nonetheless. But the, the thing is, it's definitely going into a new world agenda. And it's funny, though, to see Pastor Paul with all the nations at odds with each other, but yet even like with uh, Vladimir Putin, and yet he's coming to the United States to speak at the United Nations. You, you hit it on the head, and here's why. I really believe that. I'm glad you brought it up. He hasn't been here since 2007. So he's coming. You got all this conflict. But I really believe that this Iranian nuke deal may have, you know what? I've been looking at the seven headed monster in Revelation. Uh, you know, and there's a lot of ways you can look at who are the, what are the seven heads, all right? I mean, there's a lot of ways to look at it. And there's seven continents, all right? And the Illuminati is going to split up into 10 sectors, all right? But, and there's other, there's other ways to look at it. But, there were six nations that met with Iran and formed the most powerful agreement on the planet. And this agreement includes uh, all six nations have obligated to protect Iran's nuclear facilities against attack. So in other words, we just got a seven headed monster here that just got formed that has direct against Israel. It, I mean, it's the whole world. is. It was in one swing. And so all of a sudden, that's okay for Putin to come to uh, New York because, hey, he's part of the super alliance. It's what it is. It's in Russia, China, America, England. Whoever thought France and then throw in Germany. Whoever thought that these groups who have been always at odds from Nazism to capitalism to communism, whoever, and, and now radical Islam, how did that all come together? That is a monster. And, and it really could very well be the beginning. And then you got the Pope showing up talking what? International law, superseding all other law. This is a new world order in formation. That, that's exactly right, Pastor Paul. And, and, and what's interesting in, in, in bringing these things out here, um, you know, the, the, the Pope of Rome Oh gosh, how do you even do you begin to look at this here? I mean, he is, he's definitely he, he's he's working in the backgrounds. He he appears to be very uh, very very uh, timid, he, like a lamb almost. Uh, you know, we and then you bring out this idea of the seven-headed beast. That is just fascinating in itself. Uh, recently, I seen a, a photograph. I was actually I was just looking for photos online, and I ran across this photograph. And they had a picture of Albert Pike, the the, the guy that wrote the last uh, 33rd, 33rd degree Mason book for uh, the Freemasons. And they had a quotation beside his uh, name, and in the quotation, it was stating uh, from his book what he believed. And one of the things that he said was that, uh, and this is just paraphrasing what he says here, that, that that the world, in order for the Third World War to come about 
now that what the what the Illuminati would have to do is to come together and form some type of way to cause the Arabic people and the Zionist political Jews as he quoted it in there saying to where they would end up fighting a war between themselves to this so that they could completely annihilate one another and it seems like that undoubtedly a lot of world leaders pastor Paul are, are for this because every one of them are there you know they're 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 giving jets that are equal to the Israeli jets to the Iranians now. It's like they want them to fight each other and to, to bring about this total destruction. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And uh, they're, they're, because they figure if they could keep uh, the Arabs fighting against each other or, and, you know, that they can then, that they stay busy fighting each other, not going to fight anybody else. And I think that's part of it. But also, they want the Arabs to somehow fight against Israel and uh, uh, because everything every move they're making seems to be empowering giving more power to the very enemies of Israel I mean it's, it's so obvious to me and I can't understand we have enough anti-semitism in America that keeps the eyes blinded for a lot of people but I want to tell you that the majority of Americans stand with Israel and that 80% of the Christians in America stand with Israel. And it's sad to say there's about 20% that don't because they, they, they don't understand. They, you know, they're, um, God bless them, but they're, um, you know, replacement theology. And then in the Congress, we have about 80% of the Congress stands with Israel. But the White House, I'm sorry, but the White House is 100%. Every, they might say they're for Israel, but every policy decision that Obama has made in six years has directly inflicted pain on Israel in some way or, or created alliances with their enemies. It's just unbelievable. But I think it's very prophetic. I think it's part of what's bringing about Zechariah's prophecy. It says that Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling and a burdensome stone unto all people. And all that burdens itself with it will be broken in pieces. Okay, so the pro prophetically, I understand why it's happening. As an American, I'm frustrated about it. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> You know, Pastor Paul, I can't agree with you more. And one thing I just want to bring up here, just a little scriptural thing here, because we talk about how that the the Arabic people, uh, you know, how that they're playing these two sides here. And this was one that I've shared with you before, Pastor Paul. It's Ezekiel 35, uh, where it's speaking about Esau. And he says, I will, I will make, uh, this is uh, beginning of verse 7, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate and cut off from it, uh, him that passeth out and him that returneth. And we see all the dignitaries go in and out of Rome. He says, And I will fill his mountains with his slain men, and thy hills and thy valleys, and all the, thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. Uh, now, now, dropping down just a little bit here, let's drop down to verse... Um, uh, verse 11, he says, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have dropped down, Pastor Paul. Uh, verse 9, I will make thee a perpetual desolation, and thy city shall, shall not return, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, These two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. That's Yahweh, okay? The, you know, Yahweh was there. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them, and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Now, this clearly, don't we know God was in Israel. This is where God came. This is where the Holy of Holies was. This is where he dwelt at in the temple there with the Jewish people. So we know it's speaking about the land of Israel. Mount Seir is also Esau's descendants. Obadiah clearly identifies who Esau is. It's Rome uh, because it talks about the, uh, when they besieged Israel. Now, the other thing that's fascinating, though, is that the two nations, Pastor Paul, this clearly shows that Israel has been divided but the sad thing for the Palestinian people, though, Pastor Paul, in this case is here, is the Palestinians are duped. They don't realize they've been tricked into this. This was not meant for them to get a state for themselves. This was meant just to be used as a ploy in order for what? In order for this 
this united alliance with all these nations coming together that have supported Rome and this conquest to be able to take over Israel and the Palestinian West Bank and completely take it away from them. And you know, Pastor Paul, let me say this one other thing here too I think about. Even for my Jewish brethren, we have a law that was written to us in, in the Torah that tells us if we have strangers among us, but yet they're willing to go by the laws that God has given Israel. It doesn't mean they have to be Jewish, but they're willing to go by the laws that God has given us. We're to treat them as a brother. So the Palestinian people that want to live in peace among the Jewish people, God has allowed it, and we're supposed to treat them as brothers, not as outcasts or anything like that. So I'm not against the Palestinian people, but I do see that they have clearly been duped in this whole thing. You know, that's a great, this is a great scripture, by the way. It clearly says two nations, and your point is very well taken, and that is they're being used by the, if you want to call it the Illuminati, if you want to call it the New World Order, if you want to call it what the Bible says, the beast. Okay, yes. and it's a one world government. They're being used. Uh, you know, everybody's like, we're for Palestine, you know, because it's anti-Israeli, it's anti-Semitism, it's a hatred for uh, God's chosen people that brought Yeshua into the world. And that's the real underlying reason for the hatred. But they're using them, and they're going to be talking about this, Brother Stephen, they're going to talk about this in the United Nations in September. This is going to come up. I'm telling you, I'm hearing that the French are going to actually put a resolution on the t on the floor, maybe on September 15th, calling for a vote for a state of Palestine with the borders to be determined later. Now there's five there's five permanent members of the Security Council, and any of them five can veto this vote, and it won't come up on the floor. But we've already heard China says let's vote, Russia says let's vote, England says we won't we won't veto. France is going to put the resolution there. It's coming down to the Oval Office. It's coming down to one man, and he will be visited the day before by the Pope himself. You've got to understand there's going to be some serious conversation. Will this vote happen? And if it does, I think the world, without question, will vote. Uh, it won't be unanimous, but I bet you it'll be 150 to 160 to 30. I mean, it, it, they're going to vote a two-state if if Obama doesn't veto it, it's going to take place. And then later to be determined what those borders are, will be will, all that's going to do is create a mess. That's going to create a war. And that's we could be headed towards Psalms 83. Amen, Pastor Paul. Yeah, you're exactly right on that. And, and one thing, though, that I thought was interesting in that as well is that he states also in verse 11 that he says, uh, he's going to bring this all down. He says, when I, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, I'll just read verse 11 again. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thy anger and according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. He's going to make himself known to the Jewish people. This is going to be where the revival strikes and you know the funny thing is, Pastor Paul, and I know we're, ta we're talking about wars and stuff, but now I've, uh, I'm almost ready to get ready to preach now, brother. But, you know, this is when, this is actually when, um, uh, when he makes himself known, this is fulfilling what the Jews were wanting from, from Jesus when he was here 2,000 years ago. They thought they were going to be delivered from the Romans, and he didn't do it at that time. But they're looking for it now, and it's going to happen now. Yeah, and, and we know that the Vatican has taken, uh, they're taking a lot of measures. They're, they're really man manipulating and moving all over, trying to get control of more and more holy sites in Israel. And uh, there's compromise going on all the time, as you know. And as that's going on, uh, at the same time, uh, you have a situation where the Hashemite kingdom, the Jordanians, who rule or control or oversee, I should say, the Temple Mount. And what a, what a deal that is. I mean, Yehuda Glick, I just seen again on, uh, two or three days ago, where he blasted Israeli police for arresting Jewish uh, visitors of the Temple Mount because they, and they weren't doing anything wrong. They were, they're being antagonized or being attacked by Arabs every time they go up on the Temple Mount. Jews are not allowed to even open their mouth. Uh, they can't take any religious symbols up there or wear any religious clothing. And so... 
what you're seeing here is Israel's being squeezed all around on their borders and they're being they're, they're seeing either the Vatican trying to take more and more control of the holy sites and the Muslims trying to control the Temple Mount I, I just I just it just blows my mind because Israel has got so many different entanglements of things they got to deal with I don't I, I just pray I pray for the leadership of Israel I pray for Benjamin Netanyahu and Ravine President Ravine I, I mean they're really up against the tough stuff amen amen pastor Paul they are and uh, uh, let's go ahead to pastor Paul we'll get back on track here one thing I wanted to share with you as well that uh, uh, when we're looking at the war issue of Ukraine I'd like to go into that a little bit as well I know that uh, according to RT news RT is saying that the United States is actually sending F-22s and st are stationing those here in uh, East Europe and uh, but one of the things that's really been a major concern for me is uh, the other day and we, we reported about this uh, Russia is moving 8,000 pieces of heavy armament to the western border. Uh, again, another article came out today. Russia was uh, on this is on TASS.ru. Uh, 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 if you do forward slash en, you can get it in English as well. They're, uh, they're they got a, a thousand member of the troops that are involved in drills here in the west, uh, including. It's including 10 missile regiments involved in the drills. These are nuclear missiles, Pastor Paul. And, uh, and, and, and then on top of that, uh, Kiev, and we'll, I'll give this right back to you, Pastor Paul, to get you to elaborate on this. Uh, Kiev says, uh, uh, Ukraine, the French and German leaders laid down red lines for Russia that they're not to be crossing. They don't say what the red lines are. Well, they, they, do, do, they, do, they do, excuse me, they do say one. They said one red line is, is if uh, Donsk and uh, Luhansk, if they were to have private elections, that is one of the red lines. If they do that, uh, then uh, Russia is going to pay for it. Now, I, this kind of gets me here because I'm like, why does Russia pay for something that these people that are trying to get independent autonomy, and, and, and even in the Minsk agreement, they were going to allow them to have self-government of themselves. Uh, but yet clearly when they begin to draw red lines, Pastor Paul, and we see Russia, everything by December, they said they will have all their heavy armament on the Western Front there in Russia. I'm concerned that we're about to see war break out here in Europe. You know, Rabbi Steve, you, you've touched on something so powerful and, and the fact that why in the world would Russia be building up along the border uh, other than I believe they're, they're getting a position to protect these two cities you talked about, these two regions that want to be independent and going to take a vote. And I think it's their way of providing cover so that the Ukrainians really can't you know, really can't strike uh, and are gonna have to let the, the same thing happen in Crimea, okay? So you're probably gonna see the same thing again. And I would think this might happen just before winter because nobody wants to fight in the winter, okay? So if Russia stacks all their uh, artillery and the nuclear missiles and ballistic missiles and then says, okay, to, the, to those two cities, go ahead, now you guys can vote. Don't worry because we've got you covered and after you vote, you can, it'd be too late for a war to break out, really, because of the weather. I mean, so I really think that you're getting ready to see something big time happen. It could happen in September, even as September, October. We might actually see this call for an election and they might actually vote. And I already know how the vote's going to go. It's about 70, 80 percent, isn't it, pro Russian speaking in those areas anyway? So you already know what's going to happen, and, and that means eastern Ukraine is going to follow suit with Crimea. And that's about all Russia wants anyway. If I look at it from a biblical standpoint, that's the old mother Russia. I mean, that's really Magog if you look at Ezekiel. So they're not going to want the whole Ukraine. They just want that eastern part because that's really, whether they know it or not, it's biblical prophecy. And I look forward to that, really. Amen. You know, that's kind of interesting too, Pastor Paul, that you say that because when we talk about Gog and Magog, one of the things that I see with Russia and I find it very interesting is that the Bible says that God puts a hook into his jaw and brings him down to Israel. It's as almost as if they didn't really want to get into a conflict with Israel because they do consider Israel their ally, but God is going to bring them down and this is going to turn into a, a major issue. 
Uh, so who knows what all is going to happen as a result of all this. And anyway, Pastor Paul, any other last words you have or, or thoughts and everything or, you know? Well, I think there's a, one more thing I would throw in there. You know, we've had a great discussion on those two areas, uh, Israel, Syria, uh, Iran, New Deal, and of course Russia. But I would also say you've got to be careful about North and South Korea because not that I'm really afraid of North Korea from an American standpoint, other than Guam is sitting out there, and, you know. But we have, this is a wild card. We have a, we have a young man running a country who's a third generational demonically possessed. I mean, anybody would take his uncle, strip him down naked, throw him in a cage with 120 hungry hound dogs to be eaten alive after his uncle put him in power, who had his aunt assassinated. Who, who murdered his ex-girlfriend, assassinates, tortures Christians every other day, and, he, and he's playing around and he's got nuclear weapons. I mean, this guy is really deranged. This is a very dangerous situation, and he could do something so stupid that we could create an absolute escalation of a beginning of World War III, because China's going to back him no matter what he does, and America should back South Korea. So, and Japan's sitting over there vulnerable. I mean, it, really, it could be the wild, wild part of it all is what uh, Kim Jong Un does. So I would, I would say, folks, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, and they're in different places, and it's happening. And this is going to be a September to remember. Stay Amen. focused on it. Amen. One other <laughs> thing, Pastor Paul, uh, I'd like to, because I, I've, I lost my focus for a second there. But you know, besides, also, like you say here with. Uh, with uh, North and South Korea and Kim Jong, uh, like you said, he, the boy is majorly, majorly messed up. But uh, let's also hit real quick again, let's go back with Iran, Yemen, uh, the battle there between Yemen and Saudi Arabia there, uh, this, the whole Middle East and ISIS uh, battling in Egypt and the Sinai Peninsula. You know, these are things that are still going on. They may not be in headlines right now, but they're still going on. And so the whole Middle East is a powder keg waiting for an explosion. I think that's even got a lot to do. For example, if the United States and, you, and, and Russia go at it uh, in, 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 over Ukraine, this is going to cause, I believe, Iran to step up the fight against Israel because then they're going to think, okay, the U.S. is too busy elsewhere to uh, help them out. And I'm afraid that this is where we could get a really a spiral out of control. Well, that's a great point. And uh, you bring up Saudi Arabia with, with Yemen. Of course, it's the Houthi rebels that, that took out Yemen's government. And they're back totally supported 100% by Iran. They're a proxy group for Iran again. But, you know, the Lord gave me a word, Brother Stephen. I'm glad you brought this up. The Lord gave me a word, and I shared, on New Year's Eve, I shared the 15 points, what I call the 15 apocalyptic points for the year 2015. And one of them was there would be a death of a world leader that would change politically the landscape of his nation and the region. And uh, middle of January, I, I, I did this live show. I shared it. It's on my website. And about three weeks later, King, uh, King Abdullah died, and after he died, King Solomon took over, and as soon as he's taken over, he shook up the kingdom, everybody went in to see him, and then Yemen, the Yemen thing takes place, he gets, starts getting attacked, and all of a sudden, Saudi Arabia says, hey, we're going to go over and bomb ISIS, and we're tired of the Houthis, and they've become a lot more aggressive under this new king. It is total, which I don't think King Abdullah would have done anything. Okay, he would have said, America, what are you do to help me out? This guy wants to do it himself. And I think you're starting to see, as you say, this whole Middle East is becoming a counter. Look, Iran and Saudi Arabia are arch enemies because you got Shiite and Sunnis. And I mean, these guys are never going to get along. So this is a dangerous deal going on here. I'm with you. It's uh, uh, the Middle East it is one, one wrong move and the, the whole thing can blow up. Amen, Pastor Paul. Amen. And 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 you, like you said, it it is it's it's a powder keg, and um, I, I do see that it's about to happen that way. And I've noticed that Iran is also what Iran is doing. Iran is doing the same thing the United States does. Iran is using rebels from other parts of the world to destabilize the region to begin with. 
And we get this from uh, the former CIA, CIA director of operations, uh, John Stockwell, that actually said that about the American government. He revealed what the U.S. actually does to the CIA. They said they go in there, they get, they, they, they rile up the, the radical people. Uh, they did this in the Middle East. They did it in Ukraine with the neo-Nazi groups there, Pastor Paul. They did it, they did it in Bosnia and uh, in, in Slo uh, Slovenia, and, you know, with Bosnia. Under the Clinton administration, they did it. They send them in there, they stir them up, they stir up the locals, and then they let the war fight it out, and they kind of throw back from the distance, and that keeps the whole area in a state of chaos. I mean, they do it. That's exactly right. And that's what's happening. The Iranians have learned from this. And so now the Iranians are doing the exact same thing in the Middle East. Uh, they send in the, the little proxy groups, like you mentioned earlier, uh, uh, over there, that little group there that is fighting in Syria, that has that lobbed the bombs over into Israel. Uh, and, and then the other thing that really kind of blows my mind away, Pastor Paul, is why did, when, when Hezbollah and Israel exchanged fire, and then of course they showed the Russian firepower they had that could pierce uh, Israeli tanks, why then does this... Uh, the leader of the Hezbollah backs down and says, look, we're not ready for a war with you right now. We're dealing with ISIS. But when the time comes, we'll choose the time when we're going to fight you. What's that all about, Pastor Paul? <laughs> well, again, you know, uh, it shows you that there's some, there's some agreement going on behind the scenes by world leaders uh, where they want to start little brush fires to keep people occupied. I think it's part of a distraction. It's, it's part of a deflection strategy uh, long term as the beast gets in position. You know, you keep people fighting, keep things off track while you're moving an entire huge agenda forward, a more globalization agenda, which we see happening in every area, including the market, including the market is taking place. So it's militarily, it's in religion, it's politically, and it's in economically. There's a globalization taking place. And uh, as Christians, we have to just be aware of it all and yet we know in whom we believe. You know, we have to continue to stand, stay focused on the Lord and preaching the cross, you know, stay Amen. focused on Jesus. Amen. Pastor Paul, that brings one other thought I want to mention here when you said that as far as diversion, and then I'll have you close out the, 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 the meeting here together. But with all the things that are happening in September, especially the events at the United Nations, the meetings, the Pope of Rome coming to the U.S., which is going to be hard to have something downplay that, but there may be a good possibility they're going to bring something else to the forefront, some type of attack, some type of a terrorist activity in September to try to get the people's eyes off of a little bit about what's going to be going on at the UN, especially when it comes to the, uh, the state of Israel. And even the Pope's speech, they may even come up with something to, to kind of hide it a little bit to see that really what's going on is a new world order is being formed. You know, it could very well happen. It could very, it's a, it, it could be a false flag. It could be something that diverts the attention of the media and it keeps everybody over here watching this while in the darkness of the night, you know, the, there's going to be some resolutions voted on. There's going to be some things. There's some, there's some sidebar uh, meetings taking place all over New York. The Pope is going to come in there. He's going to lay out a blanket ideal. You know, it's going to be an ideology type speech. And then he's the, then you're going to see in the back rooms the nations of the world, the leaders of the world are going to be working together to put it together in some kind of resolution they can vote on later. Uh, but, it, you know, you're right. There will be, be a lot of bait and switch going on. A lot of, a lot, the shell game's going to be moving. And uh, that's why we're going to keep watching. And we're going to watch, I'm going to watch very closely the Pope's speech. Uh, he meets with the president, and, and we won't know what that is. But uh, we will we'll get one story, but it won't be it. He will give a speech to the Congress. We're going to cover that one live here. And, and we'll probably cover live his speech at the UN because I think these two are monumental in the formation of the New World Order. And there, it's not, he's kind of a cover. In a way, he, he provides a cover for a lot of the stuff that goes on around in the back rooms. Really does. Amen. Amen. Pastor Paul, thank you for being here with us on Israeli News Live, and shalom to you guys out there that are watching. I trust this will be a blessing to you, and uh, you have to catch uh, Pastor Paul's uh, program. I'll get Brother Paul to share that with you, the, the program. Now he has a television program as well on the apocalypse, 
Um, Pastor Paul can tell you how you can watch that. I don't know. We, we get to watch it on YouTube. In Europe, he's not airing over here yet. So he's not as super famous as he will be. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor Paul. Oh, yes. Well, if you're, if you're in North America and South America, you can watch our brand new television show called The Coming Apocalypse. And it airs every Friday night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern on DirecTV, channel 367, and Dish Network, channel 217. So on Friday nights at 11.30, we come on for a half hour television show, and the Lord's blessed that that airs and has potentially to reach 40 million people. It gets in at least those homes, and whoever watches, watches. And uh, so remember that it's, again, DirecTV 367, and Dish Network Channel 217, if you're in North North America, Central America, or South America, is available. Uh, of course, we have a daily show, as you know, Brother Stephen, every day on uh, live stream. You can just go to my website at www.paulbankleyprophecy.com. I'm on every day for three hours, and we just have a powerful time in the Lord. It's from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. So, hey, great. Amen. 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 God bless you, my brother. Shalom. And good evening. Shalom, shalom.